You decide to attend a networking event. What's the first thing you do after slapping that name tag on your shirt? A, scan the room and look for any familiar faces. B, beeline it for the bar for a little liquid courage. Or C, stand off to the side and cross your fingers hoping that someone will approach you. There is no right or wrong answer, and that's the thing. As small business owners, we don't get a how-to manual whenever we decide to launch a business. And for many of us, we aren't taught how to rub elbows. It's something that we have to learn over time and through experience, which is why in this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you my top 10 tips for networking and take it from someone who has done this for many, many years, both as a professional marketer and also as a small business owner. These tips will get you through any networking event, regardless of whether you go with a wingman or you go solo. And it will also help you feel confident in promoting your small business. Tip number one, change your mindset. If networking feels awkward and uncomfortable to you, it may be because you are going into it with the wrong mindset. What I mean by that is, if you are going to a networking event for the sole purpose of pushing your small business or your products and services onto somebody else, a potential customer, then you're missing the point. The discomfort that you feel is because you're treating it like you would some type of speed dating. And let's be honest, speed dating may work for some people, but it doesn't work for the majority of people. The truth is that building a long-term relationship with somebody, regardless of if that's a personal relationship or a business relationship, takes time. So your focus should not be to go in there with the idea that you're going to pitch your small business to every single person that you think could potentially buy from you. What you're looking for is to go in and create long-term relationships. These long-term business relationships may take time to massage, but just like in marketing, we say it typically takes about seven to eight touch points for you to actually get a sale or to make a sale with one person it could require multiple touch points before you actually get a solid in or build enough of a relationship with someone where they could start to refer business to you or you could develop some type of mutually beneficial relationship. Additionally, going into it with the right mindset as opposed to that outdated speed dating type of mindset means that you will actually allow yourself to make genuine connections. What typically happens is if you are having a conversation with somebody and you figure out that they may not be your ideal customer and you cut off the conversation too soon, you could be missing a good opportunity to make a mutual connection through that person that's standing in front of you. And so if you do go in there with the mindset of, let me just gauge if someone's my ideal customer and if they are, then I'll pitch them my business. And if not, then I'll just move on and find somebody else. That's selling yourself short and you could be missing out on really great contacts by doing that. Tip number two, do your research, know what type of event you're going to and who is likely to attend. Don't commit yourself to just every networking event that comes and goes. You want to be very specific about the ones that you attend and you want to be sure that the people that are in attendance are going to be the type of connections and contacts that you are looking to engage with. Now, while it's not typical for anybody to send you an RSVP list of who they expect to attend the event, what you can do is actually go online and see if you find any types of photos or information about past events that are similar to this one. So for example, if you're going to a chamber business after hours event and you're a new member to that chamber, go on their Facebook page and actually look at what their business after hours events have looked like within that past year. 
take a look at how many people were in attendance, see who were presenting sponsors, and also just see if there's anybody there that you may know. This is extremely helpful because pictures can tell you a lot about events. Additionally, knowing what type of event you're going to, let's say a ribbon cutting for a small business that has just opened up in your community, means that you can actually plan ahead and start to think about how your product and service can possibly meet their needs needs or any of the other attendees. For example, if you're going to be attending a networking event where there are going to be politicians and public figures, then you may want to steer clear of pitching your product and service and instead talk about what your small business does and who it helps. Think about the conversations differently depending on who your target audience is. On the flip side, if you are attending an event that's going to be open to, let's say, the general public, then you definitely want to be prepared to pitch or to talk about your product and service. Tip number three, arrive early or later depending on your preference. I know that sounds a little confusing, but Here's the thing, the key takeaway is to know yourself. Now, for some of you, if you are introverted and it gives you anxiety to walk into a situation where people are already huddled together or having conversations on their own within groups, then you may want to arrive early, so right as the event is beginning, so that way you can meet somebody rather quickly and then you could start to work the room. Or if you're somebody like me who's an extrovert, then walking into a room full of people that are already engaged is actually exciting. And the reason it is for me is because when I walk in, it gives me time to scan the room and see if I know anybody. The likelihood of me finding somebody I know is pretty high, and then they are usually talking to somebody I don't know. So when I go in and I give their arm a squeeze or say hello really quickly, they typically will introduce me to the person that they're already engaged in a conversation with. And so that happens to work really well for me. But Everybody is different and there are a million different ways to go about it. So do feels true to you and what you're most comfortable with. Tip number four, be approachable. I know this is a tried and true tip that you probably have heard a million times over, but it still rings true. The thing is you have made the commitment to go to this event and to spend one to two hours of your time there doing something outside of just hanging out with your family or doing whatever hobby you like to do outside of work. So make it worth your while. If you're going, show up and actually be present. That means you want to be approachable. You need to have a smile on your face. You need to act like you want to be there and you don't want to be standing off to the side with your arms crossed. That does not give anybody the warm and fuzzies and more than likely people will not approach you. Additionally, get off of your phone. There is a time and place to be checking your phone, but if you are solely preoccupied with your phone while you're at a networking event and it's doing something other than just inputting somebody's contact information or taking a quick note so that you can reference after the networking event, then it's going to be a big distraction. Tip number five, say their name. This is something that I personally use at every networking event for two reasons. First and foremost, I have a really hard time remembering people's names. And so the magic of threes, if you repeat something three times, you have a tendency of remembering it. So what I will do is as soon as somebody tells me their name, I will try to use it in three different sentences, not all back to back sometimes, but just within the conversation. So that way I can repeat it and I'll be more likely to actually remember it after the event. Now, the other thing it does is it makes it way more personable. There's something about having somebody say your name in a conversation that makes you feel like they're being super attentive and also that they're giving you their undivided attention. Tip number six, listen with your eyes. I can't tell you how many times I've seen this scene play out at networking events. 
there are two people engaged in a conversation. The conversation gets to the point where one person realizes that the other person is not interested in their products or services or can't do anything for their small business. And then you start to see this person's eyes scan the room. They've already left the conversation, but they're still there in front of the other person. And it makes it extremely awkward for that other person in the conversation because they already know that person A has shut down and is not interested in hearing anything else that's coming from them, but they continue the conversation. You do not want to be that person. If you are in front of somebody, be sure that you are listening with your eyes. And at first that can be awkward if you haven't practiced it before, but it means that you are looking somebody straight on and you're looking in their eyes while they're talking to you. For one, that tells them that you're being attentive and that you're still present and in the moment. If you are distracted and looking around, looking behind you, fiddling with something, it just tells them that you're not interested in hearing anything else that's coming from them and that's rude. So you don't want somebody to feel like that while they are in front of you. It is hard these days to get somebody to give you 10 minutes of their undivided attention. So by doing that, you are going to make that person feel like you are prioritizing what they are saying to you. And that is gonna set you apart. So maintain that eye contact when you're talking to somebody and be sure that you are showing them that you are listening with your eyes. Tip number seven, summarize or repeat what they are saying to you. Taking it one step further, not just showing somebody that you are listening with your eyes, but you can also do this by repeating what they are saying to you, using the same type of vocabulary or verbiage that they are using so that way they know that you are being attentive. This is a technique that is often used whenever you are talking about resolving issues with customers. So customers want to feel when they have an issue with your product or service, they want to feel like you are hearing and understanding them. And one of the easiest ways you can do that is by repeating back some of the phrasing that they're using or the vocabulary because it signifies to them that you are listening. And so you can use this same technique whenever you are in front of somebody. A quick example of this would be if you are talking to somebody and they said, oh, my 16 year old just got their driver's license. One of the things you can do is reply back and say, Susan, that's really great that your 16 year old got her driver's license, X, Y, and Z, and then continue the conversation from there. Tip number eight, understand that it's not all about you. This tip kind of piggybacks off of tip number one that I shared, which is to change your mindset. For this one, it's a reminder that your goal when going to a networking event is not to close a sale. If that is why you're going to a networking event, you might be better off attending a different type of event. One that's not a networking event, but maybe something that's a community event or a vendor event where it's 100% acceptable to go in there and to be pitching or selling your products and services. With a networking event, your goal should be to think long-term about establishing relationships that are going to extend well outside of just this one event. So ideally you want to be making connections and contacts with people that can help your small business for years to come. And we all know that takes time. And so if you are taking the focus off of you, what that means is you are going into a networking event where you are open to helping other small business owners either through making them aware of resources that they can utilize or making connections for them that can help their small business. Now, what I mean by that is, let's say you go to a networking event and you happen to meet a small business owner that is in an industry that has nothing to do with the industry that you're in. However, you do know that you have a contact that could potentially help them with a problem that they're having. So your goal should be to make that connection for them and to introduce that person to them either via email after the event or just by giving them the name of the person you know. Trust me, the second that you free yourself from this idea of having to push 
your small business or your products and services onto every person that's there, it's gonna feel like a big weight has lifted off of your shoulders because at that point, you're becoming a resource. You're looking to help other people and to make connections and to assist them in their journey. And don't think that that's gonna go unnoticed. That is one of the easiest ways to start developing a relationship with somebody and over time, if you are willing to put in that time and effort and work to making those connections for people, in time, they're gonna start referring your small business because naturally, they're going to feel, hey, that person has helped me out so often, let me go ahead and return the favor, or they're gonna get to know your business intimately, or even better, they're gonna trust you, and therefore, they're gonna feel very confident in referring other people, family, friends, colleagues to you as a small business owner. Tip number nine, keep your promises. All right, so this tip is something that I personally use because I have a tendency when I go out to networking events and I'm meeting new people and I'm genuinely interested because I think people are super interesting and I usually will say to them, hey, let's grab a cup of coffee or let's do lunch one day. Here's the thing. That's perfectly fine to do if you have every intention in keeping that promise. But if you know that you have no intention of going out to coffee with them or meeting up for lunch or happy hour or whatever it is, then don't say it because it actually diminishes the, your trustworthiness. So if it's something that you 100% plan on emailing them the following week and setting up a time to meet up for coffee, then by all means, go ahead and arrange that. If it's something you are not going to do, then quit saying you're going to meet up with them after the event. There is nothing wrong with just saying, hey, I'll see you around or I'll catch you at the next event because the likelihood is you probably will see them at an event in the future. Tip number 10, use touch to build a connection. I saved this tip for last because for one, it seems really strange and two, this is something you should do if you are really comfortable at networking events. If you are still in that phase of, I really don't know what I'm doing, it still feels kind of awkward, but I'm here, um, do not try this. Wait until you're a little more comfortable with the way you show up to networking events. What I will typically do is if I am engaged in conversation with somebody and they say something that is comical or endearing, I sometimes will reach to squeeze their shoulder or squeeze their hand. Now, for some people, this can feel very unnatural. For me, it actually feels natural because I just do this on a daily basis with my friends and family and people that I know. And so, it's something that does take practice and not everybody is comfortable with it, so you always have to gauge the situation. Obviously, we are all adults and definitely not condoning any inappropriate behavior and also not saying that everybody is comfortable with you touching them, so you just have to be very aware of that. But I do happen to live in the South and I can tell you that we are pretty friendly around here. And so whenever I do go to a networking event, I have used touch, like squeezing someone's forearm or touching them on the shoulder, either whenever I see them and I may recognize them, so whether I remember their name or not, I'll just give them a little squeeze and like wave and say hello when I'm passing by them, or I use it, like I said, whenever somebody says something funny or is being endearing. And so it is the last tip because it is not something that everybody should be doing, but it may be something that could potentially help you with just establishing that connection a little further. All right, so I have to know, did any of these stick out to you? And which do you plan to use at your next networking event? Let me know down in the comments below. Hey, if you're an SOB, small owned business, stick around and watch this next video right here. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button right now because we have over 250 marketing videos that are ready for you to watch today. Don't forget to also visit our website at www.thisseasonmarketer.com where we have free downloads and other resources for you to check out. Thanks again for tuning in. We will catch you guys next week, same time and place.